Hello and welcome once again to another episode of Bahrain Today. Our guest today is a talented Bahraini artist, Lina Al Ayubi, whose artwork is influenced by the Arabian culture and tradition. We'll meet her after this break. Welcome to our program, Lena Al-Ayubi. Lena, can you, to start with, could you tell me about your artwork and what inspired you to, to be a painter? Um, I've been painting for a long time. Okay. Uh, since I was uh, around five or six years old. Okay. Um, I used to love uh, watching uh, Japanese cartoons. Uh, they had beautiful big eyes. So uh, whenever I watch a show, I just uh, grab a pen and paper and start drawing. Okay. And I started from there, but uh, I started exhibiting my artwork uh, actually in 2014. Mm -hmm. uh, I got encouraged by friends and family and uh, the boom in social media. Okay, yeah. so I believe you have a lot of traditional paintings, if I'm not wrong. What yes. inspired you to to have a lot of, tra to draw traditional paintings? Um, the traditional paintings, actually, they're a mix between uh, Japanese art and uh, with a touch of uh, Bahraini uh, culture. Okay. Um, I, I did that mix to try to um, uh, send a message uh, about our culture uh, to uh, people who are interested in art out of Bahrain. So basically to promote, yeah, to promote the, the culture. Arts. Yeah. So, um, as I know, you have a store. Yes. So, when did, you st when did you open your store? Uh, I opened two years back. Okay. I started really small. I just had maybe two to three items. Mm -hmm. And um, I had my uh, artwork printed on them. Okay. It was a trial. It was a one-month trial. But uh, I like the reaction of customers and uh, um, the way um, art was distributed mm -hmm. so uh, I kept on uh, I kept my shop and um, it's been operating now for two years okay and I'm thinking of expanding and I just opened a new uh, shop in Lali Mall with okay. a partner so can you tell us yeah. about what do you have in your store what um, kind of I have uh, a lot of products uh, a big range of products uh, from uh, uh, fashion products to uh, uh, ceramic pieces, uh, okay. plates, art plates, uh, trays, uh, scarves. Okay. As I yeah. can see, you're wearing one of yes. them. Yes. Right now. <laughs> so, what is your, what do you feel uh, is the best way to target people to? What is the most thing that you can, you feel like you can sell people to people, and people like the most from the items or the products that you you have in your store? Mm -hmm. um, the most uh, selling items actually are the phone covers. Okay. Um, because I, I think be because we have a big collection of that and uh, and people in Bahrain and GCC in general they like to have like uh, phone covers for each occasion. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I think that's the most selling. I have seen I believe you have bags as well. Yes, clutches and yeah, stuff. we have clutches. Yeah. I think it's very nice to see, an, a piece of art on a uh, printed on a bag or a phone cover. It's yes. different and it's, it's trendy and fashionable. <laughs> exactly, uh, and I've seen, seen your artwork. It's beautiful, mashallah. Thank you. So, um, could you tell us what is your latest collections? Uh, our latest collections, uh, we just started producing uh, silk scarves. Mm -hmm. uh, they're all uh, based on original artwork. 
okay. paintings. I think we have a collection of uh, six or eight. Okay. And uh, they all uh, represent uh, our culture, Bahraini women, in a colorful uh, in a way. Colorful way. Yeah. <laughs> That's excellent. It's always Thank nice to, to show positivity when it comes, especially when it comes to an artwork. It's nice to see the positive energy behind that artwork. Thank you. Um, so, uh, could you tell me what is your favorite painting among your own paintings? Uh, my favorite painting, um, um, I did it uh, two months back. It's called The Wedding. Okay. I, I usually don't draw men. I'm, I'm just focused on drawing women. I enjoy it more. Okay. It's a painting of a man and woman, uh, and they they just got married. <laughs> okay. And um, I, I love the, the mix of colors uh, that I uh, came up with. So right. that's uh, one of my best. So you were inspired by Japanese, by Japanese cartoon? Yes. Okay. What made you, you got inspired <laughs> by the Japanese cartoon because of their big eyes? Uh, that the it's, only it's because of um, the, uh, the impression um, they give their characters j by, uh, by just drawing the eyes in certain uh, ways. Okay. It, um, it made me really interested in learning that. I, I uh, took a lot of uh, courses online. Uh, I got a lot of books on how to draw that style long, uh, long time ago. And I just uh, uh, mixed it up a bit mm -hmm. with our uh, art style, Bahraini art style, and came up with, uh, with the what whole you see now. <laughs> with the, with the, the whole idea. Yeah. Um, so where do you see the Bahraini art heading in the future? As we can see a lot of young, talented Bahrainis out there. I personally have seen, I can see more nowadays maybe than back then. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have a lot of uh, the old generation artists that are very popular and well known in yes. Bahrain. But do you think the youth can reach abroad the way that the other artists have? Actually, they started reaching abroad. It's uh, all thanks to th social media. Mm -hmm. um, artists are able to uh, display their art uh, in, in different uh, um, uh, places now and you can see their progress and uh, mashallah they're doing good mm -hmm. and are you thinking <laughs> of expanding yourself yes yes i'm thinking of uh, in in terms of uh, art not in terms of the business i'm thinking of uh, uh, participating in exhibitions out of bahrain trying to spread uh, the bahraini art So what would you like to tell the other artists out there that are not showcasing their, uh, their paintings? Uh, they need to uh, be out there. They need to uh, showcase their artwork and, and um, try participating in uh, workshops and exhibitions because each art style is special and it has its own crowd. And uh, they, they should be 
out of their bubble? Of course, they yeah. indeed, because I believe in every uh, every person sees things differently. Yeah. So, for example, I told you I like your artwork, but maybe someone else would not like it because mm. everyone has a different taste. Yes. So someone else has, let's say, if he has a plain painting, just colors. Yeah. Some people will be inspired by that and they would like it. Mm -hmm. But for example, I like the, the mm -hmm. seeing the humans, <laughs> human <laughs> figure, and pa figure yeah. and paintings. So it depends on every person. I'm sure every artist out there, there will, he will find someone that would yes, like his there's work. There's a market for exactly each, for each, each, art each yeah. type of person. Yeah. So as and as you told, as you told us, you were they pushed you to to start your business and showcase your paintings when in 2014. Yes. So you had people that encouraged you and pushed you for it, basically. Yes. yes. So uh, any last words that we, you would like to tell our audience? Uh, uh, the slogan of our shop is adding art of your, uh, to your life. Okay. Um, it's um, a colorful concept. Mm -hmm. uh, I would encourage uh, artists and customers to take a look and uh, be inspired by the colors. I'm sure, I'm sure they will. Thank you for being with us and I wish you all the best and hope to see your artwork expanding worldwide. Inshallah. Inshallah. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. The American Women Association have done a lovely event. Let's go and have a look at it in this report. Delighted to be here. This is a great event. This is the Snowflake uh, Craft Fair that the AWA puts on every year. Uh, as you can see, huge numbers of people. I think that they have about 1,500 people that come through uh, to see this. Uh, they have various ways of uh, raising money. They do a raffle, they sell things, they have donations, they have a charity part of the thing. Leah, this is something that is one of your most important charity events. Is that not right for the American yes, Women's sir. Association? Yes, one of our major source of income. Besides CTT, to charity tree trot, uh, Snowflake Craft Fair that's put out by Diane is one of the most successful ones. We expect to be raising at least double of the amount that we need to pay for the venue and then be able to support all the chairs that we have for at least six months. There's 160 tables, including the AWA tables. Well, we usually book the venue uh, probably, hmm, say, before Christmas for next year. And then we start organizing registration usually about the end of August for registration to start in September. Hello, my name is Wendy. I'm visiting from the UK. I've only been here four days at the moment. I'm visiting my son and daughter-in-law who are living in Bahrain now uh, after moving from Saudi Arabia. Um, I've come to the fair today because my daughter-in-law has a stand with lots of decorations and homemade gifts and crafts and the event itself is wonderful. There's so much talent and people have worked so hard making things. And of course, there's lots of the gifts for charities and things like that. So it's very, very nice. I think it's, it's a lovely event. I just wish we had more things like this at home in England. Colgrave Homes and, and I'm here with my friend Anne Cameron and um, we both paint uh, in a shabby chic style and, um, and together when we do our events together we call ourselves the shabby chicers because it's like shabby sh you know. <laughs> um, so this is my second time I've come here and uh, yeah it's a really nice place. I do um, the um, everything is, has a theme so it's recycled or upcycled. Uh, we take um, 
pieces that we find in thrift shops um, or in house sales and we give them a new finish and also I do the pallet wood uh, art so I uh, take um, um, reclaimed wood or pallet wood and I turn it into signs or furniture. I have a, a lovely carpenter who uh, makes the um, furniture for me but I also make my own crate, uh, my own signs so I make them from scratch. I'm Marita Dias, I'm from the Migrant Workers Protection Society and as you see at the back of us is our stall. Everything there has been made by the, my, uh, the ladies who are in our shelter and with the help of a lot of volunteers. And the, the ladies are with us as people know. We are following up their cases and till they are finished we look after them and we try to do the best we can to make them as comfortable as possible. So we hope you're going to get good business here so that they'll be also encouraged uh, and do better work. Unfortunately, we couldn't bring any of them, but uh, this is all their beautiful stuff here. other things to menu like basically a caprese salad but in, inside of, of a beignet so you really get that savory so you feel like you're eating a meal you can sit down with your friends and it's not like oh let's go have a sweet I don't want people to think that oh this is like a sweet spot this is where we want to come and only have dessert it's not that well I just got back from Europe and usually the beignets are all sweet and I didn't know that here they were gonna have savory ones too. So I tried the artichoke, which is just the season right now, artichoke season in Europe. So um, it was really, really good. And after that, I really wanted to try a sweet one, kind of like a, as a dessert. So the dough we spent uh, quite a few weeks perfecting, working with different flowers, different combinations of flowers, to get the dough to hold together and have the proper structure, but still create that signature beignet air pocket. And, and we feel just with the quality of the ingredients we're using and all the time we've spent working on it, right amount of yeast, right amount of flour, right amount of liquid ingredients, we've got that perfect balance that creates a light airy beignet that holds together and can be stuffed with incredible ingredients. I think what's so daring about this concept is that it's a single concept eatery, uh, which means that the limited menu means you really don't have much to fall back on. Uh, so having these innovative flavors, it's really so important to making this a, not only a local but national trend. Uh, you see that Sprinkles Bakery, which is just one block away, did this with cupcakes back in 2005 by really focusing on one thing and doing it so well, you have the potential to bring this trend across the country. The base of my invention was uh, English fiction movies. From there I got inspired to develop this kind of things. And then uh, first we developed a, gener a, a gen one, a generation one, which is a mechanically powered robot having a motion amplification feature. Then from that I got this new concept uh, for generation two. That's I developed the mechanical feedback to make, I mean, very easily and simply control this exoskeleton body with power, pneumatic power. So that's new concept came and I developed this and my uh, I, using my team I developed this. Actually the future of this product uh, mainly in defense, industrial, weightlifting, material handling etc. So in defense uh, we need a lot of material movement uh, especially heavy equipment, heavy weapons etc. So uh, in that purpose uh, this machine can be used only one human and this machine can lift a lot of tons of weight. 
like that it can also help in industrial application so industrial also there is lots of material movement in that purpose also this exoskeleton can be very useful the only difficulty which i face is that i can't run run and i can i can't walk too fast so that's the difficulty i'm facing uh, the rest everything is under control i got i got got, got many degrees of freedom got every kind of movements got these two switches over here and uh, the weight i can I, i i can't even feel a, sing, uh, feel a single weight because the system takes all the weight several research works are conducting on this field okay mechanical uh, powered exoskeleton is the uh, best uh, method we have to incorporated here due to that uh, mechanical feedback system the uh, cost of the project we have to reduce uh, other uh, exoskeletons are occupied with uh, uh, control systems and electronic feedback systems they are uh, uh, opted the in our project this is mechanical powered and mechanical feedback type we did first generation one which is a motion amplification mechanical exoskeleton that does not power this is not powered exoskeleton in this it is powered it's powered by pneumatic so combining those two feature we can develop a big powered exoskeleton bigger than this so that is the future of this project So Jawi is STC's uh, response to uh, the emerging and unmet needs of uh, Saudi uh, youth who are very digitally savvy. Um, as you know, uh, Saudi Arabia has more than uh, um, 67 percent of its population below the age of 30. So very young population, very very digitally savvy. They want everything real time. They want to do it themselves. Uh, they want the service to be in the format of uh, an app. Uh, are available online and uh, they want it to be embedded with social features تتكلم عن شباب يستخدمون الجوال ل 4 ساعات وربع تقريبا يوميا تتكلم عن 35% منهم على السوشيال نتوركس وجو صممت بهالشكل بحيث انها تلبي احتياجاتهم على جوهم اونلاين بدات اوريدي في قطاع الاتصالات يمكن اكثر من 12 سنه بس الفكر بجوي جدا جديد ان انا قدرت اوصل لمنصب اني اكون تشيف كير اوفيسر في هذه المرحله وتش حاجه جدا ممتازه بالنسبه للمراه السعوديه الموجوده عندنا في القطاع وده طبعا متماشي مع رؤيتنا ان شاء الله 2030 Nur her interior design segment today will show us how to accessorize our space. Let's go and have a look. Hello viewers and welcome to a new segment of interior design. Today I have a really simple and easy and lovely topic. It's about wall decor and what to use for your own wall interior. Stay tuned with me and have a look for what we have today. Viewers, right now I have this thing that I call wall decor. Something I told you in the introduction what I'll be talking about. This wall decor is something you would want to do for your interior spaces. For your living room, for your dining room, for your bedroom, anywhere you want. Even your entrance and the exterior areas as well. So right now I'm walking around, look at these lovely signs. First one is the sign, something that you would want to put to identify the area. Um, something that you want to show what the area is, identification, either an entrance, either a shoe area, either a bathroom, bedroom, anything you have in mind. Please remove your shoes. Take off your shoes once you enter the houses. This sign should be in every house, every mom's house. She would leave the sign by the door, leave your shoe here, please take it off. You don't want to filth your house or your carpet or your mar marble area or flooring, whatever. So this is a good sign for every mom. One sign that I like as well is exit out this way. Um, you can have this by the exit of your house, either the backyard or you have it as the front door, the main door. Or you could have one sign that I like as well, yes. It's this sign is men to the left because women always right. So uh, women, I do agree, women are always right. Uh, this sign is, is in every house or every girl's bedroom that you would enjoy this. Uh, we have different sizes as well, uh, identifying either it's a bathroom for women or men. 
some people might have it in their houses as a design, as a wall decor, or some would have it in their own restaurants. Some would have it if they have a, a guest bathroom, just to, you know, um, they have the way of their cultures and their houses. So one of them is the ladies, look at how um, old it looks, vintage, and one of them is for the gentlemen to identify this is a men's bathroom. We have different kind of design, uh, keep out. If you have something here you want to keep out away, um, keep it out from here. You have laundry self-services. You have a laundry room, you're identifying your bedroom or uh, your room as an, uh, a laundry service. Uh, maybe your kitchen has a pathway for laundry. So this is a good way for you to identify it as this area. Something else I'll be talking about right now is the wall decor. There are different types of wall decor of what you can use for your walls or what you're supposed to do. We spoke earlier about the size of what to use and where to place them to identify your area. This is more of a design, something to give beauty to your area, something to complete your wall in case if you don't have a different way of completing it either with frames or with paint or wallpaper, you can do something else with it, creative. Uh, one of the things that uh, we have right now are the clocks. Uh, you have the clocks, you have different types of design. You don't have to go for something very basic, very normal, very classic. You can go for the uh, modern types of way. You can go for the creative way. Like look at the one that I have over here right now is the steering wheel. It's too high, I can't even reach it. But uh, anyways, it's the steering wheel. Look at it, it's, uh, it gives you the identification of a car. You can have the classic area. You wanna use a vintage area, something colorful for your office, or your uh, dining room or your living room. Um, other thing is this kind of clock. Um, it gives you a different embossed and deposed uh, kind of uh, way of a design. Uh, the numbers are uh, extruded to the exterior area. Uh, it shows more with the shade. Once you have the shade, you can have a look at it. It comes in different colors. Um, you can use it again for your kitchen, living room, bedroom, whichever area you have, an empty area, even by the entrance. Believe me, anywhere you can do anything as long as it's very simple, very creative and very neat. And another thing right now is these kind of uh, designs, these kind of decorative uh, things to add to your wall. Um, you have the butterflies, uh, you have different kind of uh, designs of them. Um, look at these, uh, they have, uh, they're open. You can have a look at them, they come in different shapes, different designs, uh, it's either an open butterfly or a closed butterfly. You can have them on your wall, a, a long wall, an empty wall, or even if you can place them around your wall, and if you have frames around, you can place them around the frames, it would give you a different type of um, atmosphere. It would give you a different type of touch for your wall. Um, you have these as well. You have the clothing hangers. Um, you can place them by the entrance. If you enter and you have a coat, you want to take it off. Uh, you have an umbrella and you want to hang it. You have a necktie that you had a really long day and you just want to take it off. You can just put this or a scarf or even a hanger. This is a nice way to even uh, decorate your wall in case of uh, having uh, different types of clothes that instead of putting them in the cupboard or not even throwing them on the floor, of course, you can just uh, hang them on the hangers itself. You can uh, have it in a nice and neat way. They come in different uh, designs. You can see this as well. Look at how uh, beautiful it looks. It has a glass on top. It has the writings as well. Um, look at it, it comes in a vintage way, it's uh, metal, it's steel, it, uh, it's rustic. So it comes in different uh, shapes and different, uh, different colors. Another thing is the geometric uh, shapes. Uh, geometric shapes uh, you can have instead of having just a long uh, pendant mirrors that fall down from the ceiling. Uh, you can have these, they come uh, in wood with different colors different touches, lines, it's a geometric kind of way. You have these as well. Uh, they create a different touch for your wall. Uh, you can have these over here. Once you hang them on the wall, this is a lovely idea for something else. If you have an entrance, you can have them by the entrance, by the door, and you just hang those wall plants that come down from it. It looks very, very, very beautiful and really lovely. Another th thing is uh, the shapes with the lightings. You have these over here as well. 
I love these for a bedroom. This suits a be bedroom more of a living room area because different be living rooms, they could be classic or very modern. So these would go with the bedroom because the bedroom is something you bring out more of your personality, something that you would do more to comfort you. So this has the lightings, as you can see. This is a star shape. That one is the word love. It comes in different sizes and different colors. So you have the book shelving over here as displayed. You have, you can place your book on the shelving itself. You can place it anywhere, different way. Um, they come in different designs as well, depending on where, whichever area. This is a steel uh, kind of uh, metal uh, book shelving. You can place a frame on it, but um, this is mainly done for a book, something that you would place. You can have two books on top of each other in case if you don't want to pack your room with a cupboard, you don't want to pack your room with anything, you can just have the shelving, something simple, you can place them in different places just to give it a lovely and a beautiful touch. Well, viewers, another thing, the last thing that we'll be talking about is mirrors, your wall decor. A mirror is always the best thing to give your area a bigger space. You want to make your living area, if it, you had a small living room, of course, you would want to make it wider, bigger. This is a good thing to use. Mirror is a good use. It's a good piece. It's a good, uh, it's a good design for your area, for your bedroom, your living room, of course, your dining area. So one of the pieces that I like over here, it's a geometric. Uh, it has the Islamic carving, of course. Um, it has a modern touch by the paint or by the color itself. You can have a look at it. Uh, it's a big piece. So if you have a small wall, make sure you don't place this kind of mirror on your wall because this will occupy a lot of space and it will make your wall look so crowded. So make sure if you have a really tight area, a rectangular area, so you need to use something of this kind of mirror. Or if you want this kind of mirror, it's a long mirror, you can use it a vertical, horizontal way, any way you want. Another thing is these kind of mirrors, uh, they have the circular kind of shape, round, they look like a plate or a tray, they come in different sizes. So if you have an empty wall and you want to use something different, instead of using one piece of a mirror, you can use different pieces together, place them together, different kind of colors. It's going to look lovely, it's going to look different, and it's going to give you a beautiful atmosphere, of course. Um, you can have it in different sizes, they come in different shapes as well. Uh, another mirror that I like over here is this kind of mirror. This uh, actually looks like a tray, really. If you look at it, it looks like a tray, but it has the touches of a mirror. This kind of piece, it has the leather that comes inside. You can even use it as a tray if you want to. If you're a kind of person who's creative and you want to, wants to use something different, you can use this kind of piece. You have these kind of shapes as well. You have the circular, you have the rectangular, the square. Always mix and match, always break it. Don't, don't use something very plain. So use something that would give a different touch, a different uh, design to your area. Be bold, do whatever you want. Have the ability to show the world what you're capable of. Uh, when you want to invite people to your house, you want to show them your beautiful side, your personality, the way you're very modern, very classy, very elegant, but in a different type of way, using different pieces together, how to combine them all to create a beautiful atmosphere. Well, I hope the tip that Noor shared with us today was useful to everyone out there. Thank you for watching us and stay tuned with us for more tomorrow.